Okay. Well, I, first of all, I appreciate uh, you guys having me here. Um, that was an incredibly nice uh, introduction, uh, probably nicer than anything I would have said about myself, um, so I will get your payment later. Um, <laughs> but first I want to start out uh, talking about when we were all kids. Right? When you were a kid, what did you think of what you wanted to do when you were grow growing up? You can answer back. This is not a rhetorical question. Like, what were some of the jobs that you thought that you might want to do growing up? All kinds of things, right? Yeah, there are some good ones in there. There's some that I never thought of. You know, we, a lot of us, we thought about being a, a police officer. We thought about being a firefighter. Did any of us think about being a burger flipper, even if you were Nicolas Cage? <laughs> No, we didn't. We had these grand ideas about what we wanted to do and who we wanted to be. There was that door, right? And we weren't scared of the door. We would go through the door. We would say, hey, we can do anything. We'll do anything. But all that changed at some point along the way. So let's talk about, and we'll get back to the door in a minute. Let's talk about all the people in the world, 7 billion people in the world, right? If you make between thirty-five dollars and $40,000 a year, you're in the top 1%. I would venture to say that's probably everybody in this room at some point. You're in the top 1%, regardless of the 99%, the Occupy, the whole thing. We're all in the 1%. The bottom 2% in the US are still in the top 63% worldwide. That should tell you something about where we are. And that should tell you something about all the people that are out there, including these kids that are smiling at you, that want to be in your place. And they're working on things and they're thinking about things because they would surely rather be in your place rather than in the place that they are. And why is that? It's because we live in a country where we were so fortunate to be that a bunch of people, when we were just a country of 2.8 million people, think about that, 2.8 million people. We have 6 million people in Atlanta now. Half the size of Atlanta right now. That's how many people that we had. We went to war because we wanted something better or rather they wanted something better. I wasn't back, around back then. <laughs> 50,000 people were hurt or killed during the war. One out of every 112 people were somehow directly impacted by the war because they were looking for something better. Let's talk about the pioneers real quick. When the pioneers were going across country, it didn't take them five hours to go across country. Four to six months from coast to coast. Half a million people did this journey, 10% of them died along the way. And even though they knew that so many of them were going to die along the way, you know, then the numbers worked out too, right? 50,000 people. 50,000 people died in the Revolutionary War, 50,000 died going across country. Even though they knew that was going to happen, they kept going because they were looking for something better. Does anybody know who this is? It's Claire Barton. She served in the Civil War, took care of soldiers as they were dying or, or hurt in the Civil War. One of the amazing stories about her I, I found, she was actually on the battlefield taking care of a patient who was shot and killed as she was treating him, and the bullet passed right through her garment and killed him. She could have very easily been killed, but she went forward from that experience and started the American Red Cross. And interestingly, had she not been involved in the American Red Cross, she, wouldn't, she was the one actually that went forward to the, the Red Cross internationally and said, you know, we should, as part of the Red Cross, take care of victims of natural disasters. Now, you think about what just happened up in the Northeast with, with uh, Sandy. The Red Cross has played a huge part there. But before she got involved, the Red Cross internationally was only dealing with the survivors and victims of wars, not of natural disasters. Does anybody know who this is? Thomas Edison. Arguably one of the greatest inventors of, of American history. 1,093 patents. He figured out a way to commercialize the electric light bulb. Didn't actually invent the light bulb, but he commercialized it. And in doing so, he tried 700 different times to figure out a way to solve that problem. And of those failures, he doesn't actually call them failures. He says he found 700 ways that it did not work. And then he moved forward. He created light and a lot of ripple effects because of that, right? We're able to work at night. We're able to do things productively 
when there is no sunlight outside. So he was trying to solve one specific problem, but there's been things that have happened because of the technologies that he created. Ford is, is one of the most interesting stories, I think, of, of uh, inventing. Uh, he took the assembly line of building a car and went from 12 and a half hours to an hour and a half. I mean, just amazing. And interesting between these two people, Edison and Ford, Edison actually supported Ford in his quest of building cars. And that was actually one of the encouragements that he had to go forward and start building these, these cars and doing the assembly line. The other interesting thing about Ford is that when he came up with the idea of the assembly line and people were stealing his ideas, which were patented, he decided not to sue because he thought it was more important to expand the industry than to be the sole one making cars. Man on the moon, another great technological achievement. Right? So we always talk about Apollo 11. We actually got the first man on the moon. But if you think back to Apollo 1, we actually lost all three of the astronauts on the launch pad. It was a horrific disaster. And yet, that didn't stop us. We moved forward and landed people on the moon with Apollo 11. Going forward from there, Apollo 13, we almost got people on the moon, and we almost lost them in that attempt, but we got them back. And NASA called that a successful failure. And if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have gotten Tom Hanks back, and we wouldn't have sent him <laughs> off to that island to go talk to that ball, and then, you know, everything would have been lost. Does anybody know who this is? You all are impacted by the technology they created. Vince Cerf, Vince Cerf and Bob Kahn. They invented TCP IP. So all those devices that you have that connect to the internet, they wouldn't be possible without these guys. And the reason they came up with this technology was to deal with a potential failure in communication. Right? So the internet was created by government funding because we needed something to make sure that if we were ever attacked and our communication systems went down, that there was still a way to talk. So that's why the internet's built the way that it's built. And then the side effect of that is now, you know, we all get to help people get money out of countries because, uh, you know, they're, we're somehow related to some princes and things like that, right? right? Everybody's related to a prince here, right? I'm waiting for my check. It, it hasn't come yet. It's soon. So the point of all this is a lot of problems out there, right? The environment, energy, agriculture, biotech, medical, transportation, and information and software technology. That's actually an area that I obviously spend a lot of time in. I do startups, uh, and I'm not going to tell you a lot about uh, my startups, but the impact that any of us have in any of these areas is actually quite immense. But the challenge is, do we do the things that we need to do to be able to solve those problems? It's about that door again, right? Are we afraid of that door? And are we afraid of going through that door? And there's one reason why we're afraid of going through that door. We're afraid that we're going to go through and we're going to fail. But here's the secret of all of this, is that just because you fail, it doesn't mean you're a failure. And by going through that door, there's wonderful things that can happen. These people that we've already just, you know, just now talked about, they did some amazing things. But inevitably, they also did a lot of things that they failed at. If Thomas Edison had stopped on 699, instead of pushing through to 700 or 701, he wouldn't have invented the light bulb. I mean, that would have been horrific for all of us. We would have waited even longer for, for light. It would have happened eventually. Somebody would have figured it out. But it would have delayed the, the, uh, the productivity and everything that happened in the world by who knows how many, how many more years. So think about, again, the Declaration of Independence, the guys that, that did the Revolutionary War, 56 people that signed the Declaration of Independence. Now, the interesting thing today, too, actually, very this day uh, exactly, is that 212 years ago today was the first meeting of Congress in 1800. To have something as an idea that lives for this long is phenomenal. But really think about their downside versus your downside or my downside of doing anything. Right? If these guys had failed, 
They would have been caught and tried for treason and executed. Now, I don't know about you, but the things that I do day to day when I take risks, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be tried for treason and executed. So really what it comes down to is this, is that there's a lot of ideas out there. There's a lot of problems out there. And any one of you could solve one of those problems. And so I would challenge you to be like a butterfly. Fly around, figure out those things that you could help solve. Know that the flapping of your wings might create that butterfly effect and cause lots of good things to happen. And even if you fail, good things will happen. Because if you live for that idea, you can succeed, and you will move forward, and you're going to help a lot of people. Thanks for having me.